I hope you have a fabulous work week ahead and I hope everyone had a great weekend. So let's kick things off this Monday morning with a peek outside here at Shelter Island. There will be areas of fog, low clouds at the beaches this morning, but for other parts of the county, the marine layer is actually a lot weaker, so it should be warm and sunny this morning for the inland valleys. Now, let's get to your five day forecast. It will stay warm for the first couple of days before we cool back down just a touch. 75 degrees today, 72 tomorrow, then upper 60s for the rest of the week, 69, 67, etc. Expect much warmer temperatures, though, if you're in the inland valleys. Now, in the next 15 minutes, I've got you covered. I'll let you know just how hot it will get inland. A proposed immigration legislation in Congress could allow more de deportees to return to the U.S. The provision comes in response to immigrant advocates' criticism of record high levels of deportations in recent years. If approved, the measure would change existing regulations to enable a wider range of people who were expelled from the country to apply for waivers. Now, parents, children, and spouses of U.S. citizens or legal residents who meet certain requirements would be eligible to apply as long as they were in the U.S on or before December 31st of 2011. Happening today, a trial to consider whether yoga should be taught in public schools will get underway. The issue at hand is whether yoga is a secular exercise or a form of religion. The nonprofit National Center for Law and Policy filed a suit against the Encinitas Union School District. The center filed the suit on behalf of some parents who accused the district of violating laws regarding the separation of church and state. District officials say the exercises practiced by students are far removed from any religious origins. Despite a trio of political scandals in the White House, the president's approval rating is holding steady, at least for now. Jim Acosta takes a look at the latest poll results. You all are going to get wet. As President Obama escaped the White House to deliver a commencement speech in a steady rain at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Republicans were still pouring it on. There is a culture of intimidation throughout the administration. Top GOP leaders fanned out on the Sunday talk shows, vowing to get to the bottom of the IRS targeting scandal involving Tea Party and conservative groups. Who knew? When did they know? Why did they do this? How high up in government did it go? What they want to do when they're lacking a positive agenda is try to drag Washington into a swamp of partisan fishing expeditions. A feisty senior White House advisor Dan Pfeiffer was asked time and again, when did the president find out about it? When it came out in the news uh, a week ago Friday, I think. And here, here's why. Because here's the cardinal rule when you deal with situations like these, not for just for this White House, but for all White Houses, is you do not interfere in an independent investigation. The IRS scandal hasn't damaged the president's approval numbers, according to a new CNN ORC poll. But a deeper look at the numbers finds the public remains concerned about the IRS, along with the questions about Benghazi and the government's seizure of phone records from Associated Press journalists. After his address to college graduates on Sunday, the president told a Democratic fundraiser, it's him versus Washington. Sometimes you feel as if Washington is uh, impeding rather than advancing uh, the possibilities that these young people represent. But with more hearings featuring top IRS officials coming this week, it's a feeling the president may need to get used to. Connecticut commuters found other ways to get to work today after a train derailment, derailment knocked out service over the weekend. Now, those who normally ride the train into New York are now taking buses, carpooling, and telecommuting. More than 30,000 passengers commute on the rail corridor on a daily basis. Federal investigators are still trying to figure out what caused Friday's derailment. 70 people were hurt when a northbound train hit a southbound train. And for the first time in more than two months, work week commuters can board the Sprinter light rail train. Services for the train that goes between Oceanside and Escondido uh, was restored on Saturday. The North County Transit District took the train cars out of service in March after it was discovered their brakes were wearing out much too fast. In the meantime, passengers were shuttled between the regular stops by buses. Now this gives new meaning to the phrase up close and personal. Take a look at this video film during a documentary film shoot in Alaska. A grizzly bear approaches the camera, curious, sniffing, licking it. Then yes, it's trying to eat it. This is incredible footage since it's filming inside a grizzly bear's mouth. Wow! Camera didn't suffer any damage. We'll be back in a little bit.